I survived 100 days in the brand new medieval Minecraft mod pack. Now this mod pack has a giant skill tree, epic bosses, and tons of other surprises. In these 100 days, I want to use that skill tree to become OP, defeat as many of the bosses as possible, and collect the 12 unique ender eyes, which opens the end portal. Day 1, the journey started on a snowy plains village. As I uh, wandered into some of the villagers' buildings, I opened this spawn bag, which got me set up with oak logs and apples. I made a crafting table and some sticks to start, and then went and looked through some of these chests. I picked up a bunch of items, the most important being this apotheosis gem. As some of these foods were cooking in the smoker, I rummaged through more of the chests around here. Here I picked up these uh, chainmail gloves and this icebreaker relic. After equipping both of those, I crafted a wooden pickaxe and then upgraded to stone tools. From there I activated the waystone in the village and grabbed this uh, exposed iron ore. Before moving on from this village, I snatched up a blast furnace and ran over to this tower. Now this mod pack is surprisingly challenging since the mobs are very strong and I have to keep my stamina in check. Inside of the tower, I picked up a bunch of these apotheosis gems and grabbed this flint knife. The books in here were not that good though. At this point, I did the math and realized I couldn't really use the gems just yet, so I just stored them inside of the tower. Past that structure, I found another place which had a rare affixed iron sword. I equipped that and found some iron nuggets and one iron ingot as well. There also happened to be ores here, so I decided to cook those, and as soon as that was done, I bolted since it was turning dark. I ended up finding another type of tower which had an uncommon level diving helmet which was stronger than the wooden one that I spawned with. Since I had enough wool, I crafted a sleeping bag for later and tried to fight an apotheosis boss mob. At this point, I really couldn't take a single hit from this guy, so I played it very safe. After taking this dude out, I picked up this dagger, which had some really solid effects. Inside of this cave, I decided to pick up as many of the exposed iron ores as I could, and went back into my little tunnel to cook them up. As all that was happening, I crafted some iron armor and looked at this giant skill tree. As morning hit, I crafted an iron pickaxe and really wanted to find a proper area to start a base. While I was searching, I ended up inside of a cave that had a giant tetra structure. I didn't really care about this place just yet, so I moved on. Here I also fought a level 1 wraith who happened to be really strong and took down half of my hearts. Once that was taken care of, I fought a horde of zombies who also happened to be way too strong, but that actually got me up to level 6. This meant I could get some skill points and I started off with a mining tree just to get this armor upgrade and worked up to get near this uh, life regen perk that helped a ton and I started moving deeper into the cave grabbing all the iron and coal I could find. The best items down here were these expetrified orbs which always give you tons of levels. After using those I had three more skill points to use. I used one more for armor and two more to get even closer to life regen. I set up the two furnaces I had and cooked up all of my iron ores. From there I hopped out of the caves and went back to look for a nice biome. To be safe I chopped down this gigantic fir tree so I would uh, never need wood again. That night was very dangerous as I had a few close calls. Somehow I felt safer inside of this battle tower. I took out the zombies inside of this place and broke the spawner. Then I staircased up to the top of the structure. Here I picked up a bunch of golden iron blocks, then came back down to use up more skill points. I finally was able to increase my life regen and put a spare point into more armor. Since this skill tree is gigantic and the skill points were limited, I decided to focus on blacksmith and mining. Oh yeah, if you stay awake in this mod pack for too long, you also get tired, so you would have to sleep sometimes. Day 3, once again, I was out to look for a better biome. Before that though, I cleared out some of the leftover mobs. This got me up to level 4, which was enough for one more skill point, and of course I used that on life regen. Then on top of this one hill was a cabin, and in here there were 4 cows. I took out 2 to start, which gave me 3 leather. Inside of the cabin, I cooked up some of the steak and picked up some hay bale, which meant I could breed the last two cows. After that, I took out another cow to get four pieces of leather, and I grabbed a bunch of sand as well. As soon as the sand cooked, I crafted two backpack tanks and made a standard traveler's backpack. This was absolutely massive since I could clear out my inventory and use these orange slots as a crafting grid. I also made a shield as well and grabbed a quest reward for crafting that backpack. That gave me a torch which should prevent mob spawns and a supply camp. With all that done, I made a bucket and filled up the tanks inside of the backpack as well. So there are a few tedious things about this mod pack. First, I have to purify my water before filling the canteen up so I don't get the thirsty effect. And second, the shield only has a chance to block an attack. Before the night ended, I hit the jackpot of hay bales and uh, had a stack of bread at the ready. 
After purifying some water and filling up my canteen, I went out to explore once again. This time I went out in another direction. I also found an ice pit and now this place seemed a little too dangerous for me right now so I moved on. After crossing a frozen lake, I saw a sign which pointed me to some structures. Right in front of this sign was a tower which had a stray spawner in the center and after breaking that, I opened the chest which had some really good loot. There happened to be a corrupted eye and some source gems in here. Eventually, I found myself inside of another village which I ransacked and stole the waystone from. That gave me an ender pearl as a quest reward and I went inside of this little cave here as well. Here I put another point into life region and got closer to the blacksmithing perks as well. With all this mining, I picked up a ruby and these gems can be slaughtered inside of your gear. Eventually, they can become pretty overpowered. To do this, I crafted a smithing table and slaughtered this ruby into my iron sword which now drains health on hit. I also put this apotheosis gem on this dagger, which increased the experience gained. Even with all these upgrades, I had to be very careful, so I made sure to move slowly and lit up as much of the area down here as possible. As I got into a much larger cave, I broke two spawners, and inside one of the chests underneath, there happened to be an enchantment table. Then, after using this expectrified orb, I had three more skill points, which I put into crafted armor defense, so I could get closer to the main blacksmith perk. After doing more inventory management and smelting, I went to the other side of this cave. Here I broke another spawner and the chest underneath had an anvil. Then I grabbed three more expectrified orbs. After using all those orbs, I got up to level 16 and of course used those to buy more skill points. These were then used to pick up iron skin, which just increases my armor across the board and I put the rest into a uh, crafted armor defense. I stuck around the mines a bit longer and grabbed more XP orbs, which of course meant even more perks. I managed to pick up two diamonds during this, and inside of these spawners, I got a simple reforging table. As I was looting these items, I got attacked by a mob called a Nargoyle, which was terrifying. I had to fleet the heal and then take it out after that. Anyway, I stuck around this cave, breaking more spawners and picking up more skill points. I also grabbed a third diamond. Then I fought a phantom, which had tons of health. And this ended up being worth it since the spawner chest in front of this guy happened to have two more diamonds. Down here, I also fought another apotheosis boss mob. And uh, this guy managed to drop a really good helmet. Right next to that dude, there was another boss. And uh, this thing happened to be a giant bug. So that was my cue to start heading back. Day six. So I got attacked by a zombie riding a giant bug. And this is by far the scariest thing to happen to me. I ended up getting to a safe point and was able to take out the zombie. From there, I put another point into the crafted armor defense and fought a looter who dropped a nice gem. I slaughtered that gem on my helmet, picked up some obsidian from a chest and started to surface up. I spent the rest of the day trying to get away from all the snow and it took forever. Whatever biome this happened to be was gigantic. Luckily by night, I was able to get to a plains biome and hid out in this little hut. The only problem here was this ender golem, but this guy could barely fit inside of the house. As soon as I woke up, I started running since I really didn't want to see that ender golem and uh, it was nice being out of the snow, but now I really wanted a flat area to start a base. This ended up taking a little bit longer, but over this hill, I found a pretty flat place. Since I had a supply camp, I tried placing it down, but had like multiple issues. I really wanted these big ones, but the process of clearing the area out was super annoying. So I chose a mine colonies version of the supply camp and after a little digging, I was able to place this little thing down. With that done, I put down the diamond magnum torch as well, which should stop all the mob spawns around the area. After that, I picked up all the gold blocks underneath the cart and cleared out the logs from this little area. At this point, I also noticed a simple storage network was in the mod pack, which would be a lot of help. So I wanted to use the cleared area for chests. Day 8 to 9, after sleeping in my base for the first time, I noticed this legendary apotheosis boss on my minimap. So these guys would be a death sentence for me, which meant I had to keep my distance. After checking that out, I placed down a waystone, called it home, and put down six double chests. They were separated by one block since I needed to link all of them up after. Once I cleared out my backpack and inventory, I crafted network cables and link cables. So these link cables hook up all the chests together, and the network cables basically link the system up to the chests. For now, I just had the cables up since making the route required nether quartz. Also around this area, I had the smithing table and the reforging table down as well. Then since I would have to go to the nether eventually, I crafted a diamond pickaxe. I also force loaded the two chunks that my base was on and crafted a novice spell book. I didn't have any spells just yet, but magic would be very helpful later. To make this scribes table, I needed archwood logs, which meant I had to start exploring some more. Near my base happened to be a little pillager area and the guys at the bottom were pretty weak, so I was able to get rid of them. When I started climbing up the stairs, there happened to be a vindicator who was like significantly stronger. Two it's from this guy and I was down to three hearts. I had to be very, very careful. After healing and blocking the guy off, I was able to take him out. 
Now, uh, this Vindicator dropped an almost broken Sharpness 5 sword, and the chest in the little room was pretty good. I grabbed all the bookshelves and made our way to the top, but there was an Evoker here who I couldn't handle just yet. On the way back to my base, I found a big archwood tree which I chopped down. Back home, I used these new archwood logs to first craft an imbuement chamber, which allows me to get more source gems. Once that was done, I chopped down this uh, cart, which was next to my tent, and I uh, had to fight a rare level boss in between all of that. The chest plate the boss dropped was awesome. Anyway, from there, I placed on a scribe's table, crafted 15 bookshelves, and set up an enchantment area as well. 10 these days off, I repaired some gear and looked through these spells. Day 10 to 11, literally as soon as the day started, this legendary bear jumped inside of my base. I took like one hit and my boots broke, but uh, luckily, I happened to be high enough just to not take any more hits. After about a minute and a half, I had this boss taken care of and picked up the legendary boots it dropped, which were pretty okay. I put them on anyway and made new leggings. Also, I had another skill point which I then started putting onto perks, which should uh, increase my damage. From there, I crushed two gems to make gem dust and went down to this little cave under my base to get copper. With that, I came back up and crafted a salvaging table that I put underneath the reforging table. Now a lot of these boss drops won't go to waste. I then had just enough diamonds to make a sword and tried seeing if I could disenchant some gear. At this point, I got confused on which warp scroll I was supposed to make and picked the wrong one. For this, I imbued some lapis and picked up tons of stone. With that, I crafted some source stone and made four arcane pedestals. Turns out I had to craft an arcane core as well, and once all that was done, I finally got some mage bloom seeds. I grew those seeds and turned them into fibers before realizing there was a much simpler warp scroll. The next day, I patrolled around the coast near my base picking up seashells which can uh, be turned into bone meal. With that done, I had enough mage bloom fibers and just needed a few more source gems. It took forever but I now had a warp scroll which ends up only setting your location the first time and a crow stole my mage bloom seed so things were not going well. I had to go mining without a warp scroll. Down in the mines, inside of the first spawner chest was a diamond chest plate and tons of other really good stuff. I grabbed as much as I could, lit up the cave as well as possible, and fought tons of mobs. After a good amount of the mobs and spawners were cleared, I mined 4 expetrified orbs and used them to get 7 whole levels. With that done, I staircased back up to my base and enchanted this diamond pickaxe I had. For now, it only had like fortune 1. After that, I used the rest of my levels to upgrade some weapon skills. With these upgrades, I went deeper into the cave and fought tons of creepers. I also took out a rare level boss inside of its chamber. That got me a really nice shovel and a fire immunity ring, which I obviously immediately equipped. Once that was done, I used another skill point to work up this armor and block chance path. When all that was done, I came home and put an uncommon affix on a new iron helmet. This one increased my health. Before it got dark, I tried to explore all around the area that I built my base in and had no luck finding any structures. I did however tame a really cool pet who immediately died. I kept exploring and even fell into a trap structure but this place had no loot. Before the night ended I managed to come back home and uh, crafted a proper warp scroll. So with these new scrolls, traveling was way easier since I could potentially go as far as possible. During this uh, expedition, I found a random waystone in the wild which I activated just in case. Then inside of this rainforest, I worked my way up to this battle tower. I made sure to grab any gear that I could salvage and also started just climbing up. The first floor with the spawner was actually pretty tough. I managed to take a good amount of damage from these skeletons. The next floor were all zombies who were significantly easier to take out. And I had even more levels and gems. I was also able to upgrade to iron gloves even though I never do unarmed punches. And uh, yeah, at the top, I picked up a diamond block. That night, apparently a big moon appeared which just gave me slow falling and jump boost 3. I eventually got back home to crush some gems, salvage some gear, and all these materials helped me put a nice affix on this diamond chest plate. Before sleeping, I also repaired uh, the other iron gear that I had. A 15 to 16, I bought this emerald ring which increases the uh, XP drop from mobs. I got it from a wandering trader. Then I grabbed tons of sand which I turned into glass. While that was cooking, I was planning on going down to the mines to get more obsidian. I got immediately distracted by a side cave and was tricked by these fake diamond ore blocks. Here I took out more spawners though and uh, grabbed a bunch of loot from the chest inside which some of them ended up having obsidian in. I also fought a ton of mobs down here as well. Before moving forward, I grabbed a few expetrified orbs. And as I ran out of torches, I started making my way back to the places I'd already explored. Doing this, I picked up even more of those XP orbs and other solid loot. On the way out, I took out an enderman and had more than enough obsidian to set up a nether portal. Since I had a fire immunity ring, I was feeling okay about going to the nether. 
I really needed tons of blaze rods though so I could do some massive upgrades. The only issue was that I actually spawned on top of a gigantic ocean of lava so I had to go back home and grab blocks. With the dirt I was able to slowly build to the nearest island and stay amongst the trees. This one rare apotheosis boss had a bow and started shredding through my health so I had to be even more careful. I picked up tons of quartz which I needed, bought a hoglin and ran as fast as I possibly could. Breaking the quartz also dropped tons of these gems which can be slaughtered on top of the apotheosis ones. Anyway from there I picked up a bucket of lava and fought a demon right in front of this nether keeper structure. On top of this structure there happened to be tons of nether warts and really solid chests. I then managed to break into the main room which had these mobs called giddy blazes and these dudes are pretty easy to take out. With those guys taken care of I took everything from the loot room underneath. I tried fighting the other mobs but I almost died so I had to warp back home. This is when I realized I was missing one more blaze rod. Before the night ended I was able to make the storage network route which connected all the chests together and then the storage request table which allows me to craft and grab the items I need. The next morning to knock off some more quests I crafted a uh, trading post which will be useful when I start using villagers. I also put another skill point into melee damage and block chance. A wandering trader also had a wither skeleton trade which I snatched up and then I moved the waste to the center of my base. From there I crafted this thing called a blank upgrade which would be useful later. From all the diamonds I got in the nether, I also made the rest of the diamond armor and looked through these affixes. I just chose the first option to put on my boots and leggings and then use these uh, passive skill tree gems on my chest plate and helmet to get a slight boost. After that I used up my expetrified orbs to get another skill point and uh, slotted gems into a ring that I had. Since I had to go back to the nether I crafted more warp scrolls and also made a uh, tetra workbench for all the rewards. Day 18 to 19 with even more upgraded gear I went into the nether, grabbed tons of nether rack and started exploring. Some of these guys still did tons of damage but I held strong. I even took out some endermen. That actually made it easier to navigate the nether as well. I was able to put another point into melee damage and block chance and I finally found a structure. This one happened to be a stalwart dungeon. In here were these reinforced blazes who didn't really do too much damage but they just happened to be super tanky. On the bright side they also dropped tons of blaze rods. I then teleported back home and put a skill point into a really good ability. From there I fought this rare apotheosis boss and was able to craft a blaze traveler's backpack which makes me immune to fall damage and blaze projectiles. I also used one of those blank upgrades to upgrade the backpack to the iron tier. Once that was done I went out to explore the area around my base and it took a while for me to find anything of value. I got lucky though since the first place I found was a mine shaft. Now since the floors in here were made out of leaves, I could see the diamonds very easily. I ended up already getting like 9 of them just by walking into this area. Another reason these mine shafts are really good is because the chests always have relics inside of them. I didn't get a good one on my first try, it was just a leather belt, but it was cool anyway. Oh yeah, I also used up like 16 levels to increase my armor ratings and uh, these skill points started getting super expensive. The rest of this mine shaft sucked so I warped back home. Day 20 to day 22 I used up 6 diamonds to repair my armor really quickly and started exploring in a whole other direction. This time I had a boat. I fought some pillagers along the way and as it started getting dark a crimson moon started. So I had no clue what this thing was but when gas started spawning in the overworld I basically got it. Turns out all the nether spawns just started happening out here. I fought a bunch of ghasts, wither skeletons and even some zombie hoglins. This did end up giving me a good amount of levels though. I only managed to get like one gas tier that whole night. I increased my armor once again and this little indicator down below says 3 times now. With all that exploring done, I came home to put a lot of the items away. From there I got a source gem and started the process of crafting an air essence. This thing took super long since I didn't have any source. After all that was done I upgraded my mage spellbook as well and had enough items to craft a glyph for a new spell. Since I didn't have any levels to actually get the crafting started I decided to make a little farm that would generate source for me. On one side I planted wheat and on the other side I planted source berries. For the next few days I made projectile break and a projectile harm spell then went underground to get some levels. Immediately because of these expetrified orbs I was up to level 14 so I stayed for a little bit longer grabbing more levels which got me up to level 22 then decided to come home. Here I crafted a leap glyph and made a leap spell. Since this one wasn't that good initially I had to craft a diamond pickaxe and make a glyph of amplify. Adding that onto the spell made it so much better and since my backpack ability gets rid of fall damage this was my new way of traveling. I ended up using 19 more levels to up my armor once again and started leaping around. Eventually I thought that this bounce spell would be good to pair with leap so I kept that bookmarked. Anyway now that I could essentially fly I was able to move around very fast. 
Since I landed on the ocean, I also ended up near a fleet of villager ships. Inside of these chests were a few really good items like this magic mirror. For the rest of the night, I was filling up my backpack and flying around to any land nearby. In the morning, I took on this half-submerged battle tower, which had the iron and gold blocks on top. From there, I ran through an abandoned village and took on this pillager tower, but this time I went from the top. This meant I had to fight the evoker first, and these guys were a lot stronger in this mod pack. They teleport around, become invisible, and also have a bunch of health. Anyway, with that guy taken care of, I started looting the containers in this place. I also took out the vindicator inside of this building, and uh, before it became dark, I actually found a zombie dungeon. Now this place was kind of glitched since half of the structure was broken. While I was there, I decided to take out as many zombies as possible and break as many spawners too. I ended up getting tons of levels and a bunch of solid items which I could use for later. One of the better items I got was another ring, the same one that increased the XP drop for mobs. So with two, I think I got like a 50% boost. Before leaving, I used a bunch of levels to increase my armor and got a netherite ingot from a smelter's bag. Back home, I put all the gear that could be salvaged into a rack and uh, made the glyph of conjure mage light and extend time. This was because you could basically cast the mage light on yourself and get night vision. So with night vision and projectile break, I ran through the cave under my base and picked up whatever uh, expetrified orbs were on the ceilings. With these levels, I repaired my armor again and slept to get rid of this tiredness effect. Day 26 to day 27, I did another mining expedition to look for expetrified orbs. With about 11 of those, I was close to level 30 again. While I was in the area, I fought through a mine shaft and I uh, was able to grab a bunch of good loot. This time I was also able to use this magic mirror to come home since I had set my spawn. Using the enchantment table, I got fortune 3 on a diamond pickaxe and I uh, used the rest of my levels to upgrade equipment repair efficiency. That ends up being kind of a mistake later. After purifying some water, I upgraded the harm spell with amplify and went back down to the mines to test it out. This thing wasn't really that strong, but it still did the job. Anyway, while I was there, I cleared out some areas and uh, got a diamond helmet and boots from a chest. All the loot that I picked up happened to be really solid, especially the XP orbs. I surfaced back up by the next morning and combined two diamond swords together, then repaired all of my armor, which only happened to take like one level. From there, I used up the XP orbs and started looking through these rare affixes. None of them were too good, but I did get some solid enchants on the boots. After all that, I hopped back into the nether and realized that the magic mirror didn't work here. I set a waypoint just in case I got lost though. From there, I started looking for gas tiers and uh, any other structures I could find. I ended up only getting like one gas tier, but I did find a really nice bastion. Now this was an absolutely terrifying experience since these piglins do tons of damage. Lucky for me, a lot of them decided not to jump down, which meant I could focus on removing the magma cubes first. With the area cleared, I grabbed the gold blocks and opened the chest. In here, I grabbed a few corrupted eyes, one netherite ingot, and a smithing template. I really didn't want to stay in the nether anymore, so I made my way back to the portal. I came home and put everything away, and then I equipped these diamond gloves. From there, I grabbed some sugar cane for sugar, and I went out to look for cows. For some reason, every other animal but cows decided to spawn, so it was super annoying. Anyway, I ended up grabbing the bucket of milk anyway, and started the ritual for this thing called an abjuration essence. With a tiny bit of source I had, I actually sped the process up for like 10 seconds. As soon as that essence was done, it turns out I needed more XP to craft the Glyph of Bounce. So I took out some bison who dropped a bunch of beef, which I started cooking, and then finally crafted the Glyph of Bounce. With Bounce and Leap, I was able to traverse a lot easier. A 29 to 30, at this point, I realized I needed mending badly. So I used this little corner of my base to basically trap the villager. With this little area set up, I went down to the mines since I needed uh, an arcane block. Of course, while I was here, I picked up some XP, but I came home quickly to craft this thing called a quantum catcher. From there, I teleported to the first village I spawned in and broke a beehive so I could snatch up an unemployed villager. I placed that dude in the corner and started rolling through the trades. Honestly, I was surprised at how quickly I got the mending book trade. It only took like a few minutes. I locked in the trade using paper and uh, bought a mending book, which happened to be really expensive. At this point, I'm going to show you guys a glitch that happened in my playthrough. So just as a heads up, there's a few broken things in this mod pack, like whatever this was, and uh, some of the mobs leveling. I had to close and open my world again. Anyway, from there, I farmed sugarcane inside of my base and expanded the chest area a little. The next morning, I repaired my gear, and at this point, I really needed to cure this villager and reduce the prices. Before that, I did go underground and found a really cool looking cave, which had this thing called Aether Steel Debris. I was down here to get more diamonds since I needed them to duplicate the smithing template. I broke all the spawners, looted all the chests, and even mined some diamonds down here. Of course, more importantly, with this fortune pick, I even got more XP orbs. 
I then fought this crazy looking mob called a Murmur. And then uh, inside of this zombie dungeon, I picked up the Lost Eye. When I got up to around level 28, I came home and put everything away. Then I used all the orbs I had to get up to level 38. Using these levels, I was able to get protection 4 on the boots and leggings. Day 31 to day 32, I hopped back into the nether. And once again, I had to fight that weird mob who would just take over my vision. After a pretty annoying time, I had this mob taken care of. And from there, I went around the basement of this uh, nether keeper dungeon and was able to take out more of these giddy blazes. I got some great loot in here and in the main treasure room. So during all this time, the mobs were now very high level, which meant I took tons of damage. But on the bright side, I also got a boatload of XP from each mob. By taking out all of these guys, I got up to level 36. I had to teleport home after finding this uh, 4 tower bastion so I could repair my gear. While I was here, I also started brewing uh, potions of weaknesses. I had to break my diamond magnum torch and then trapped a zombie in a hole. Once the potions were brewed, I threw this librarian down there to get it turned into a zombie. From there, I brought that dude back and started the curing process. I had to wait quite a bit, so I enchanted some of the gear I had. As soon as the villager was cured, I put mending on my helmet and bought another book. At this point, my chestplate and helmet both had mending on them. Once the librarian restocked, I sold a ton of my books and bought two more mending books. With this, I was able to upgrade my leggings, but I held on to the boots since they didn't have the proper enchants I wanted yet. I also used a skill point for more uh, equipment repair efficiency, but with mending, this ability was basically useless. The next day, all that trading actually gave me enough XP to repair most of my gear, so I hopped right back into the nether to take on that 4 tower bastion. Along the way, I took out this little magma spawner room, and the chest inside had a nether eye, which was going to be very helpful for later. From there, I got onto the first corner of this structure and looked into the chest on the top of this place. Now the loot in here was great. There were 3 ancient debris, 1 netherite ingot, and a smithing template. It. There were also even more corrupted eyes as well. I then picked up the gold blocks in here and tried seeing how strong the piglin brutes were. Yeah, they were uh, way too much for me. I had to retreat after two hits. I managed to take out a good amount of them just using my bow and the spells that I had. Then I almost died again trying to loot the central tower. After regrouping, I got back into this structure and uh, there were no mobs this time. I picked up two ancient debris from the center and then I moved on to another corner which had uh, the same chest as the first one. There were smithing templates and ancient debris inside all of this. Before leaving, I decided to fight a ton of blazes and uh, as soon as I got back home, I smelt the debris immediately as I put everything away. I made five smithing templates and had five netherite ingots, which I decided to use to upgrade all of my armor except for the boots. At this point, I had a new issue. Netherite armor was super heavy, which meant my stamina would get used up extremely quickly. Thankfully, I did have two weightless books. The next morning, I used up all these uh, passive skill tree gems, which ended up giving me a very small boost to the gear that I was using. With that done, I had the materials, so I upgraded my backpack to gold tier and then diamond tier. As soon as that was done, I made a new shield and then went to sleep. Day 35 to day 37, I teleported back towards the spawn village and I uh, went to explore around this place. I fought through the evoker tower once again and grabbed tons of books in here. Also, the way this mod pack works is the farther you are from the spawn, the higher level the mobs are, which makes the mobs around this area pretty weak. Anyway, I really couldn't find any other structure, so I hopped into this cave to grab some XP orbs, and turns out I actually was in a spider cave. So I decided to stick around to see if I could find anything cool. I dug around for a few minutes until I broke into a side cave from here. All these mobs were only level 5, which was awesome since I was uh, fighting like level 20 guys in the nether. Anyway, I used a skill point on gem power and then started going deeper into this cave. Here, I grabbed more aether steel debris and took out two apotheosis bosses. One was an uncommon giant bug and the other was a rare level dude. I called it quits on the mining trip after this and came home to clean up my storage system. From there, I built this aquarium because I assumed whatever villager took this job would be able to sell me like sea lanterns. Later on, I also made a gem cutting table which would allow me to upgrade the gems that I had duplicates of. I put one of those in my sword and then had to sleep because this tiredness effect was awful. Day 38 to 40, turns out I hadn't explored the area to the right of my base thoroughly so I flew over there. I first ended up in a really cool looking village and started rummaging through the chests here. I grabbed all the gems that I could. Even though I just had the helmet equipped which was the only thing heavy, my stamina was still taking a huge hit. I also couldn't really find the waystone in the village, so I just decided to keep exploring. Luckily, I was able to activate a random waystone in this wasteland, which would be a great area to summon some bosses later. From there, I actually found an emerald geode, which was really cool looking. I decided to mine around this area. As I got deeper into this cave, I found my first stellarite piece and even more diamonds. This one strip mine then deviated into a pretty large cave, so I was fighting tons of mobs and breaking spawners most of the night. My stamina, on the other hand, was critical, and the only 
only bright side was that I had gotten a weightless book from one of the chests. So I had to fly back to the waystone I found in the wasteland and then teleport it back home where I could go to sleep. The next morning, I stole the villager from the spawn village and turned it into an oceanographer. I then jumped into the ocean to grab tons of kelp to help level this trade up. Around this time, the stamina effect was getting very bad, so I just had to use that weightless book on the helmet. From all the caving, I had a stack of XP orbs which got me up to level 33. With these levels, I put a rare level affix on my chestplate and leggings. These things just increased my armor, which is all that mattered to me right now. Then I opened up a bunch of these ender bags that I had and was able to craft this warp stone. Since I really wanted to upgrade my boots, I spent the rest of these days down in the mines fighting mobs, breaking spawners, and using these XP orbs. I also grabbed some stellarite pieces as well. When I came back home, I had a protection 3 enchant for the boots, so I snatched that up, put mending on the boots, and then used two skill points. With all that done, I placed down the librarian once again just to get a ton of emeralds and then decided to hold all these uh, eyes of ender since I wanted to put them on another chest. Day 41 to day 42, I used this rack right next to my tent to house the four ender eyes that I had and then looked at some upgraded bookshelves. After that, I remembered I had tons of gems laying around this one tower all the way back in like day one. Once I bought all that back, I went into the nether to uh, hopefully grab some gas tears. Since I was there, I did one run through this nether keeper dungeon and was able to get a bunch of levels. Before leaving, I took out this demon lord guy and got out to level 27. With that done, I moved on since I really needed to find a good structure. I fought through this one blaze spawner room and then used a skill point on this uh, other armor tree. Once again, after even more traveling, I finally found a fortress. Now this is special since the main castle here always has tons of gear to salvage. As soon as I got to the center, I started tearing through these barrels and picking up any gear that was uncommon level or better. As soon as my backpack and inventory were filled up, I decided to come back home. From here, I put everything away and started salvaging everything. I had four arcane sands, which were going to be very helpful. So since I had the levels and the materials, I decided to start rolling these affixes for the better ones. All of my armor looked good and I started slotting the apotheosis gems into them as well. I got a speed upgrade on my boots and a sharpness increase on my sword. And uh, with that done, I actually upgraded my sword to netherite as well. As soon as morning hit, I picked up another mending book, which I put on that sword. And uh, once that was done, I decided to go exploring around the snowy biomes once again. I cleared out this one tower and grabbed all the gems here, then did the same thing to this little area that had a stray spawner. As I moved forward, I ended up in this little abandoned village which had zombies in the basement. Once I cleared that place out, I also cleared out this little pillager area. From there, I bought a zeal lighter and a blue journal from this blue skies librarian. The quest rewards for all that gave me the resources to make all the portals for the blue skies dimension. That night I fought tons of wild and defenders and equipped this relic called the Rage Glove. And this day I did the ritual for an air essence and uh, crafted the Glyph of Slowfall. I had to replace the bounce effect with this one since it was way more helpful. Day 44 to day 45 I grabbed a waystone that was out in the wild and uh, was super determined to get these gas tears finally. I hopped into the nether and got very lucky as I flew into a stalwart dungeon. At first I almost died to this incomplete wither but when I came back for the second time I realized all the mobs here were like level 20 and dropped so much XP. Three of these reinforced blazes gave me 20 levels. I started blocking off these incomplete wither spawners and started looting the chests which had a good amount of gas tiers. From there I had the smart idea to farm these mobs of course. In the skill tree I used this dimensional gateway thing to get to the enchanters perks. Farming these withers was actually doing wonders. I already got a really cool perk which increases damage. I also cleared up the side paths on each corner so I could go around this entire structure but I actually decided to stick around one spawner. Eventually I placed a waystone down here and used used another skill point. At this point I got an even better idea which was to start upgrading the main spawner I was using. So with that little area set up, I smelled tons of sand for glass bottles and started working on making regen potions. Then I very stupidly decided to grab tons of netherrack to smelt instead of just getting nether bricks. Finally, I was now waiting on the bricks to be ready so I could craft the hell shelves. I smartened up and grabbed tons of bricks in the nether instead which allowed me to place only 9 hell shelves for now. After one more trip to the nether, I had this enchantment setup upgraded, which meant I could use 45 levels to enchant. Since I wanted an enchantment library as well, I kept 4 of those hell shelves in my backpack, and then ended the day off getting up to level 30. Day 46 to day 48, I grabbed a bunch of sugar and clocks, then slowly built closer to the spawner that I was using. I turned down the max and minimum spawn delays, and then turned up the max entities. From there, I came home and realized that I was out of redstone. I only had enough for 16 clocks, which still helped me get another skill point. I stayed here farming since these uh, enchantment perks were getting really good. I even managed to get the main enchanter perk, which I actually didn't notice working at all. It said it brought down the enchantment level 
requirement, but everything stayed the same. Since I was back home, I added two more chests, and of course, I was right back to farming levels. With 46 levels, I got efficiency 4 on a pickaxe. Then I grabbed a skill, which uh, increased my health. The big perk here actually gave me one heart per armor enchant, which was massive. To help the spawner out even more, I decided to go caving for redstone. I ended up with 32 more clocks, which reduced the max delay from 540 to 250. I also increased the spawn count while I was there. With all that done, I now had to hoard levels so I could infuse the L shelves. As soon as the first four were done, I crafted the enchantment library so I could throw all the books in there. I then used some of the levels to get great enchants, which I had to put on my gear. Before going back to grinding XP, I picked up a silk touch pickaxe. With the next two skill points, I increased my damage some more and fought some mobs right outside the stalwart dungeon. I still managed to get hurt very badly by these incomplete withers, but on the bright side, noticing that these things were spawning outside gave me a great idea. So after putting a new affix on my sword, I reduced the spawner's uh, spawn range and use the silk touch pickaxe to move the spawner to the center which made it like infinitely better. During this, I got even better enchantment perks and uh, more armor too. Day 49 to day 51, at this point I had so much XP I didn't know what to pick. I decided to increase my critical hit chance with uh, two skill points. Also, since I had a million wither skeleton heads, I went underground to fight one of these withers. This first guy wasn't too strong. I was expecting to get one-shotted by these dudes, but uh, they were still pretty tanky. Once I took the first one out, I grabbed the wither eye and another star. Plus, I also got some ender bags. Then I started digging towards the right so I could summon another wither. So for some reason, a bunch of bosses need nether stars to be summoned. So uh, yeah, I just decided to fight both of them. I grabbed the quest reward as this wither was being summoned and uh, this one was significantly stronger. From there, I put one nether star away, grabbed a bunch more levels, and uh, picked up a netherite ingot from a smelter's bag. Once that was done, I came home to upgrade this reforging table so I could start using those high-level affixes. With the levels though, I started enchanting books and then putting them inside of the library. I also managed to enchant the bow and upgrade my sword. The two arcane sands I had were used to uh, enchant the bow up, which was actually really strong now. Anyway, I decided to get more levels and uh, work up this armor tree so I could get its final perk. I got it up relatively quickly and the armor indicator started saying four times. The next skill point was used on another great perk. Once again, with these levels, I also enchanted more books to upgrade the pieces of armor I had. I started to run out of food too, so while I had some of these cooking up, I went over to the desert biomes to really try and find a desert temple. I ended up in every structure but the one I needed. Before the night ended, I had cleared out a pyramid, pillager tower, and was making my way towards a pirate ship. I destroyed the mobs in the structure since my sword was actually really strong, and I picked up all the loot from the treasure room. I legitimately couldn't find anything new, so I came home to put everything away. I made a detour back to the nether to level up and grab some glowstone. This was mainly so I could make this thing called a research table and figure out what these uh, relics were doing. One of them had a cool earthquake ability. To end these days, I got a really good vein mining pickaxe and put an attack damage gem on my helmet. Day 52. Since I was gonna pick up some skills that improve the shield, I also put a rare level affix into one. Then I put a 15% health gem on it as well and was able to get some great enchants on this thing. I really wanted to fight a few bosses so I used up one skill point and uh, increased the sharpness and looting of my sword. With that done I teleported to the stalwart dungeon and used a nether star to summon the awful ghast. Just since I was scared, I ran out and started firing arrows from a safe place. I then found a dungeon bag which I opened up and there was an enchanted golden apple here. So with that thing eaten, I went head first into the gas chamber. This was the right move since I was able to do tons of damage to this giant gas with my sword every time it got close. It also dropped 70 whole levels and a bunch of random stuff. Once I grabbed the quest rewards, I moved on to the next nether boss. This one was called the Nether Keeper and it did significantly more damage. I safely built down and was able to do a good amount of damage to this thing. In only two hits, it had already reduced my hearts down like crazy, so I swapped to my bow. I basically almost died after a few more hits, so I had to stay back even farther. By the time I had taken this guy out, all the effects that I had from my golden apple were gone, but at least I didn't have to deal with this guy again. That meant three of the Nether bosses were done. Again, because of that one auto leveling mod, these bosses were way too strong. Day 53 to day 54. I wanted to upgrade this spellbook to the final tier, but I needed two more things, a Wadden Tribute and another Nether Star. Before doing that, I used up tons of levels to fill out my uh, enchantment library and then decided to make a cleric so I can buy a bunch of lapis. I leveled up this villager's trades to a good amount and used 15 more levels to fill out the library some more. Then I went down to the mines to take advantage of this vein mining. I picked up an absolute ton of loot and also socketed this passive skill tree gem into my shield. From there, I got up to level 1 and enchanted even more books. This was all just so I could get an even better sword eventually. Since I had a bunch of uh, crafting bonuses, this basic sword already starts off with a better base attack damage. 
This new sword also already was gonna have Sharpness 6, Smite 5, and Sweeping Edge 4. After putting Mending on that sword, I grabbed all the mana boosts and regen books for uh, any armor that it would fit in. By the next morning, I actually ran out of levels to upgrade this chest plate, so I decided to go around looking for vexing Archwood logs. Finally, with these, I made the Tablet of Summon Wilden, which meant I could fight the Wilden Chimera. I grabbed everything I needed and started the ritual for this boss. After a little bit, the Chimera spawned and I immediately pushed it back with my new bow. Turns out this guy wasn't too strong, so every time I was able to do melee damage, I managed to take down huge chunks of his health. After surviving some slam attacks, I had the Chimera down and picked up the Tribute. Once that was done, I started grinding out levels and infusing the Hell Shelves. This process took a surprising amount of time, but I was even able to make the glowing Hell Shelves as well. I then spent a good chunk of these next days in a mine. Here I gathered a bunch of material just in case I would ever need these things later. I also mainly stuck around because there was a mine shaft, which meant more relics for me. The best thing I picked up here was this Infinity Ham, which meant I didn't have to carry food around anymore. I used a ton of XP orbs and uh, came home to put the items away. Also with these levels, I used an infinity book on my bow, which changed the appearance of the bow as well. The rest of the relics were kind of garbage, so I kept them inside of the chests. Finally, I got a really good rare level affix on the sword that I recently made, which increased my attack damage. I also slotted a 40% lifesteal gem onto this sword, making it pretty great now. Looking at my quests, I decided to take on the Undergarden really quickly. I built the portal and used a catalyst to activate it. From there, I was able to take out the Stormborn immediately, which was the first quest and then the Rot Beast, which was right underneath the previous mob, and that was a second quest. The next boss actually spawns in a structure called the Catacombs, so I did one quick sweep of the area before moving on from this dimension. When I came back home, I learned that uh, with this Survive mod, you could basically sleep through the entire day, so I wasted all of Day 56. Day 57 and Day 58, I had to take down one more Wither, which meant I ran underground again. Then, I had all the items I needed to make an Archmage Spellbook, which unlocked Tier 3 spells. After that, I basically used up all of my apples to craft Golden Apples and upgraded my backpack to Netherite Tier. With that done, I filled up all the water tanks and started bookmarking all these eyes of Ender, and I just crossed off the ones that I already had. There was also this really cool gem, which added a uh, plus one level to any fortune that I had, so I slotted that onto my pickaxe. Later that night, I took down like three whales, and I explored this little ice area. I even found an ice maze biome. There wasn't anything too good here aside from this mystic wand which gave me regeneration. The next morning I flew onto this pirate ship which was uh, manned by a bunch of skeletons. They really didn't do too much damage but they did have some really good loot lying around. Right above this place was a floating village which I launched up to and here I grabbed a bunch of books and gems, basically anything that looked kind of good. With that done, I flew past this giant body of water exploring the land around here but there weren't any good structures except from this one tower. I broke in through the top and took out this boss called an illusioner immediately. From there I grabbed the quest reward and everything else inside of this building. Before coming home I found a random waystone on top of this tower, ransacked some apotheosis structures and even fought a bunch of endermen in this little village. Day 59 to 60, I crafted a nature's compass, searched for a desert, and started heading over there. Along the way, I finally found the waystone that this one village had and activated that just in case. Once again, I was just looking for a desert temple the whole time, but uh, when I got this bad omen effect, I decided to kill two birds with one stone. In a raid, you can have witches and evokers spawn, which meant I could just knock out two more eyes. I used that previous village as a sacrifice, and with the help of some guards and an iron golem, I blazed through the early rounds of the raid. Later on, I started getting more witches and different types of pillagers spawning, so things were getting a little harder. Even with all that work, I ended up failing the raid, but I did get a witch's pupil and a magical eye. I used that pupil to make a witch's eye and had two more of these things checked off the list. The next day, I got up to level 80 and used one skill point on gem power. From there, I grabbed a few levels and went around looking for more structures. At this point, I needed a fortress. So when I found one, I started picking up all the high level affix stuff. I came home to salvage some of those gear and then put mending on my shield. Day 61 and day 62, I really wanted to explore the Aether Dimension, so I bought some glowstone from the cleric and noticed that this dude also sells the evil eye. I kept this uh, cleric in the quantum catcher just to be safe and uh, built the aether portal after. I ended up spawning away from any island so it felt lonely for a while. When I finally made it on land, I fought this blue slime and shot down a flying whale. Further into this dimension, I made my way into a tower which had some okay loot. One of the chests happened to be a mimic which looked really cool. I eventually figured out that this tower thing summons a boss. So I was fighting an air whale king. This guy was pretty strong and I was eating my golden apples, but on the first go around, I leaped too far away. On the second try, I was just baiting the boss to do its slam attack and then getting my melee hits in after, which allowed me to get rid of it. My reward was a platinum key, which opened up a fairly average chest. 
Anyway, the dimension actually had two main dungeons, which I spent half the next day looking for. I eventually called it quits and came home. Since I had a few more arcane sands, I upgraded my leggings, helmet, and chest plate to epic level. For my helmet, I fit in another attack damage gem. For my sword, I used this gem cutting station to upgrade another attack damage gem and slotted that in. Turns out you could also get rabbit feet from an alchemist, so I made an alchemist table and slept. As soon as I woke up, I went over to the spawn village to turn a villager into an alchemist. From there, I started advancing the trades, and some of these trades were expensive, but I ended up getting the rabbit's feet anyway, and then the evil eye. At this point, I had 8 whole eyes of ender. I then bought a bunch of glowstone from the cleric to make more glowing hell shells. Once that was done, I made a stack of deep slate and grinded some levels as they were cooking. This was so I could make dormant deep shelves and then infuse those to move on to the next level of these enchants. Once morning hit, I started going over to random beaches that I could find on the big map and shred them apart with vein mining. This first try, I actually got nothing. But as I moved on, I ended up in a desert pyramid. Here, I broke the TNT trap and got an old eye from the chests. Once that was done, I put an epic affix on my boots and on my sword. From there, I made a cartography table to try and get a buried treasure map from this floating village. But that wasn't working at all. Instead, I ripped this beach apart, which was right underneath this place, and actually found the black eye and one heart of the sea. So in total, I actually had 10 eyes, but I completely forgot to put the old eye on the rack. I ended off these days by making a glyph of lightning and a lightning spell. A 66, I spent this day fishing, and uh, this actually took forever. I managed to waste almost a full day trying to get puffer fish, but by the end, I actually made a good amount of water breathing potions. The rest of the night was spent using this lightning spell on horses and skeletons. I needed an item called the Undead Soul, and they only drop from skeleton horses. Day 67 to day 69, I set the compass to find a jungle biome and started flying over there. Along the way, I fought this Ender Titan, but since it was raining, I guess this guy just teleported away. Past that structure, I ended up in a witch village and this place had some really good loot. I activated the waystone in the center and looted as many houses as I could. They all had like a really good amount of potions and ingredients. So with that done, I flew over to the structure that I uh, didn't know was a jungle temple just yet and looked around. I vein mined the floors which spawned tons of silverfish and from there I started getting lower. I looked through some of this uh, redstone machinery, but I still didn't figure out that this was a jungle temple, so I moved on. That night, I found a tiny forest biome, which was really disappointing, but I did take out this battle tower, which gave me a bunch more diamonds. Finally, I stopped being an idiot, and I jumped back into that previous temple, and I brute forced my way down. Inside one of the chests, I ended up getting the rogue eye and a talisman. From there, I looked around a little more and came back home, where I salvaged some ancient level gear. I turned that into some mythical level material, which I could use, and went over to find an ocean monument. Monument. Somehow I completely forgot I had an old eye in my storage system as well. I searched around this uh, little ocean around here and jumped into a pirate ship which had tons of loot but the most important ones were these uh, prismarine shards and crystals. I was able to make two sea lanterns and flew over to a lighthouse where I snatched up more bookshelves. During the search for a monument I took out a grand mutant skeleton and found an igloo which had a trapdoor but no basement. The next morning, I knew I found the monument since I had mining fatigue 3. Before going in, I did a few things. First, I broke the sea lanterns on the outside. Then I set a waypoint so I could come back home and make a cold resistance potions. When I slowly worked my way back, I noticed that the cold resistance didn't help at all. But this freezing effect only slowed me down, which wasn't too bad. Anyway, the first elder guardian didn't drop a guardian's eye, so I looted some of the chests around this place. The second dude did drop these eyes, so after that was done, I immediately came home and put everything away. At this point, I had enough items to also make this crafting remote as well. To end these night off, I kept uh, one waystone in my bag and fought like two skeleton horses who didn't even drop anything. Day 70 to day 72, I forgot to record a little bit, but all I did was basically just move the oak fences one block ahead and added a whole new layer of chests. In total, I had 29 chests all linked up. From there, I spent the rest of these days looking for igloos and uh, failed on the first one, which didn't have anything. But the second igloo had the secret room and I left with a cold eye. Once that was done, I grabbed all the eyes that I needed and put them in my backpack since it was time to find the end portal. Now, this part of the journey was fairly simple since the eyes don't break, so I just followed these things straight on. I stopped once in a while for a structure like this airship and uh, this little castle. Other than that though, I was going wherever this eye told me. It took a day and a half of traveling, but I got to the point where these eyes started turning back and this was my 
my sign to start digging down. I then broke into the stronghold and had another really long journey to find these end portals. This one took quite a bit of searching, but up these one set of stairs, I finally got what I needed. Here, I set up a waystone and I started placing down all the unique ender eyes. I was actually lucky that one frame was already filled in. For the last minute prep, I grabbed some bottles, made sure my bowl was ready, and hopped in. The quest reward for making it to the end was a choice between two beds and some arrows. Anyway, from this little spawn room, I popped out and made it to the center of this island to get the dragon to start spawning. Then, my first order of business was just breaking down all the end crystals, which I was able to do pretty easily by just leaping around. With that done, I picked up a bunch of dragon's breath and started doing melee damage on this big behemoth. My sword shredded through the first round. As I prepared for the perch, I picked up more and more dragon's breath and was able to take even more chunks out of the dragon's health. Once this guy was taken care of, I had tons of loot. I also had a bunch of levels which I used on two skill points. Now that that fight was over, I took one of the gateways to the end islands and started looking for an end city. This part was actually pretty quick. I even got lucky as this first end city already had an end ship. I started from the center and made it to the top of the structure which had some really great loot. Anything that wasn't like high level gear, I sent over to the storage system and everything else like this relic, I put into my backpack. These shulkers were extremely annoying though, I spent most of my time just fighting these guys. Eventually I decided to move on to the ship, which only had two spawners. Now the chests in here were a lot better, I got even more dragon scales and of course the main thing I was here for, the elytra wing. At this point I was at a crossroads, I didn't know if I wanted this elytra for the glide spell or to eventually upgrade it. I decided to keep the elytra on me though, before leaving I found this uh, Shrieker boss's lair, which I marked down, and some other random structures. Back home, I got Unbreaking 4 and Mending on the Elytra, salvaged all the gear, and looked through the relics that I picked up. So at this point, I felt pretty brave, and I went over to the Nether to find some bosses. I actually got very lucky and found this uh, Netherite monstrosity. However, this dude happened to be like level 80, which meant after one attack, all of my toad was popped, and I had to get out of there as fast as possible. This was my cue to come back home and settle down for a bit. Day 75 to day 78, that last boss fight was kind of a wake-up call, so I picked up one more blacksmithing perk and crafted a new set of diamond armor. So with those perks, I basically just wanted new armors that already had a higher base armor rating. From there, I grabbed tons of XP and opened this smelter's bag which gave me some obsidian ingots. That made me realize that this mod pack has the Draco Arcanus armor. Knowing this, I came back home to make some obsidian with iron and smelt that for obsidian ingots. First, I only had enough dragon scales to make a helmet, but this thing was already double what my netherite helmet was. So I knew I had to make the whole set. I teleported over to the end portal and hopped right back in. This time I went the opposite direction of where I ended up the last trip. Unlike the last trip though, I didn't get lucky and had to spend a good amount of time just flying around. I fought a mutant enderman along the way and uh, got to the end city right after that. For some reason, the corners of these structures sucked. They didn't have any good loot. I marked down an obsidian altar which was right next to this first end city and uh, jumped into this weird building that had like teleporters. Each floor was also protected by a mob called like the Radon Sentinel who happened to be really strong. This structure was worth it though since I picked up some legendary level gear. Once that was done, I searched for another end city and in this one, I was finally able to start picking up tons more dragon scales. I got some high level gems as well and even these netherite gloves. I made the set of armor in inside of the city and came home to smelt more obsidian ingots. Since I was back home, I also salvaged some of the legendary gear and started looking through affixes and enchants for all of this new stuff that I had. I picked up a really solid affix for the chest plate, but needed more levels for some of the other gear. With 100 levels, I got a really nice helmet and on the next go around, I picked up a really nice sword as well. For the rest of the gear, I settled on the first affix that showed up and then had to work on enchanting these new items. I decided to uh, start filling a bunch of books with enchants and then throwing them into the library. Once that was done, I combined some protection books together and ended up with a really nice chest plate. From there, I was able to deck out the helmet next, but uh, the rest of the gear needed more time. Day 79 to day 81, to put the finishing touches on the gear, I grinded more XP and enchanted even more books. Doing that, I was able to make a really good pair of leggings and for the boots, I needed one more round of mob grinding, which was just enough to deck this thing out as well. Since I had enough levels, I was able to enchant this sword at the same time. Now that I had a full set of gear, I set down the librarian and bought a bunch of mending books. At first, I only had enough levels to enchant the top three armor. Also, now my armor indicator said like six times, which was a big upgrade, and the hearts happened to be increased as well. Mind you, this was all before I had um, equipped the apotheosis gems onto this armor. Once the morning hit, I put mending on the rest of the gear and started socketing in the gems. 
Turns out all the good ones were in my old armor, so I used this uh, vial of arcane extraction to get those back. For my sword, I put on the plus 5 attack damage and 40% lifesteal gems. For the helmet, I had an attack damage percentage gem, and for the chest plate, I had like a health percentage gem. I had to use the gem cutting station to upgrade some gems for the leggings, and then use the really good ones at the end. One of them reduced the total physical damage taken, and the other increased protection levels. From day 82 to day 86, I did an absolute ton. First, I used this enchanting apparatus setup to craft a set of battle mage armor. I set those as my cosmetic armor since I really liked the way it looked. Once that was done, I made a portal to the twilight dimension since I assumed I would get like almost 100 level per boss. Also, because I've done this a million times, I'm just gonna speed through this. First boss was the naga inside of the maze, very easy to take out. The second boss was the lich inside of its tower, and this one was a little harder since I had to deflect projectiles. Oh yeah, and somehow like I killed a zombie in here and it said I had defeated the Upsidolith and completed the quest. Anyway, from there I had three choices. I wanted to take on the Minish Room first, but I really couldn't find its lair, so I decided to go and find the Night Phantoms instead. Now usually this structure takes forever to go through, but I got lucky this time and found the main Night Phantoms room immediately. I took care of them in seconds. Next up was the Alpha Yeti inside of this one snow cave. With that done, I finally found the maze in the swamp and started moving through that. This one actually took a decent amount of time to find the boss room, but when I did, the minish room happened to be very weak. I then ate this thing called the Meef Stroganoff and went over to fight the Snow Queen. I stayed on the outside where I found out where the boss was because of the meter and then broke into this little area. This fight was also really simple. I just had to wait for the Snow Queen to get down to the same height as me. With that done, I moved over to the final two bosses and the first one was my favorite. It was the Hydra. I decided to just brute force this boss and started swinging, which ended up doing the trick. The final boss of this dimension was next and to me, it was the Urgast. This boss fight was a little different since I started off by doing a little bit of damage with my bow. Then I had to craft a pressure plate and rewire this machine to basically drag the Urgast in. Once that was done, I wiped this guy out and basically cleared out all the main bosses in this dimension. Honestly, I didn't get any good amount of XP aside from that one Upsidolith quest reward that was glitched. To help with that though, I started farming some levels and after all that, I picked up this 15% uh, damage with gem weapon perk. That perk reminded me to socket this moonstone in my sword. Day 86 to day 87, it was the moment of truth time. I went back towards the netherite monstrosity since I felt pretty brave. This time though, I was only a 2 hit kill instead of a 1 hit kill. Luckily I still had my totems. I managed to escape once again. This auto level mod is completely busted for bosses. At this point this dude is basically impossible to beat legit. I had to hide up on this little roof to start doing some damage. Oh yeah, this boss also has like 4400 health which meant I was swinging forever. When I finally got this behemoth down to a third of its health, it swung once and took half of my health down. If I didn't have this leap ability, I would have been toast so long ago. From a little bit further away, I was able to do some damage with my bow, but this is when the boss started getting wonky. It started climbing up its own lava pool, and before I knew it, this netherite monstrosity was inside of these netherrack mountains. I had to dig around a bunch to uncover this big thing, but at least now it wasn't fighting back. This time I just stayed back using my bow, which took a long time, but it worked, and I had the netherite monstrosity taken out. My reward was the hammer it dropped and the mysterious horn. From there, I came back home and started flying towards the ice maze biome. This time I found a shipwreck which had tons of loot, the most important one being the shell horn. By the next morning, I had summoned the ghost of Captain Cornelia, expecting an intense boss fight. But after a really cool entrance, I took this boss out on like one hit. These fishes that were summoned managed to put up more of a fight than the whole boss. On the way back home, I managed to start a raid, which was great since this was part of a quest. Anyway, I breezed through these waves of the raid until I got to like the last level, which for some reason I couldn't see any mobs on the map and I couldn't find these guys inside of the caves, so this was also a lost cause. On day 89, I was in for a pretty ridiculous time since I uh, only had like two more bosses left in the nether and I went to go and find them. They were both inside of this thing called a burning arena. So I'd already fought these guys before on other mod packs, but they were never like this high of a level. Anyway, I made my way over to the structure, which looked amazing and was already struggling against a minion who happened to be level 80. That was already a bad sign. Still, I took care of it and picked up these burning ashes. This is when I made a big mistake. 
I summon Ignis. Now, not only is this boss level 120, it also moves very fast and has like way better range attacks too. One sword lunge attack almost killed me. I only stayed because of this epic boss music. Oh yeah, also arrows didn't do any damage. This auto level mod thing was gonna ruin me eventually. I marked this boss down and finally got like one hit off which didn't do anything. That's not even the worst part. I eventually actually got like multiple hits off which didn't even scratch the boss. Anyway after a little bit I called it quits and grabbed the quest rewards from the Obsidolith boss which was like 50 levels. From there I picked up some skill points and prepared for some other bosses. Day 90 to day 92, a little bit away from my base I noticed a mine shaft. Hoping to get some relics I started digging a little bit deeper. I eventually broke into a deep dark biome where I picked up tons of skulk. On the mini map though, I noticed a little area. So I started digging towards that place. Turns out this was the void blossoms lair. And unlike the last boss, this guy was an absolute cakewalk, basically only taking like five hits before I had it down and out. This actually reminded me that I had these soul stars, which led to another boss of mass destruction. So I followed those things and this journey took a good while. I got up to the boss area, placed those four stars down on the altar of summoning and uh, the night lich spawned. Now I was able to get one hit off of this guy and that took like a third of its health down. The hardest part was just getting close. Just like the void blossom, this boss was also pretty weak and only took a few hits. With that cleared, I felt brave enough to take on the Ignis once again. I got back into this burning area and was able to hit the boss a bunch of times. I even tanked an attack. From there, I leaped over, and as I was eating a golden apple, one huge stomp wiped me out completely, ruining my 100 days world. If you made it this far, leave a like and check out this video right here.